Hello there people of the internet, I'm NBZ. Welcome to a new video. I didn't have any ideas, so I'm gonna play every single game on my Switch for one minute, and I'm gonna review them. That's this video. I That's the concept. That's as far as I got in terms of thinking about it, and now I'm just gonna make it. So we'll see how this goes. Alright, let's start things off, I guess, with the first game, which is gonna be Golf Story. So I'll just wait until it loads and shit. I'm going to review and play every game of this Switch. Okay, so Golf Story is a game where you run around an island and you're this little boy, um, and you can throw golf balls at things like these crabs, and it doesn't really do anything. But it's actually a game about um, playing golf, and it's like an RPG. It was made by two Australian guys, and it seemed like it was going to be a very small deal, and people thought it was going to be pretty cool, but then it came out, and it's like, oh, it's, hey, what happened if the Mario RPGs came back? Because Camelot can't be asked to get off their asses and stop making stupid Mario tennis games that nobody likes um, anymore. Um, so they decided to make one instead. And it's really good. You can play golf in it, um, but also you can um, not play golf if you don't want to because it's got like some mini game stuff that is pretty fun. But this is the main golf and you hit the ball and you want to try and get it in the hole as quick as possible. It's a very slow game um, and take your time with it. It's really gorgeous. I like the art style a lot um, and I think that they should make another one. Oh no, I kicked my ball into the hole! Oh my good, look at that, I wind. Um, so anyway, this is um, Golf Story, you can buy it on the Nintendo eShop, and it's still exclusive to the Switch, which I'm surprised by, because developers probably should have put it on another shop by now, given the fact that it's a critical darling at success, and people really like it. Review over 8 out of 10. So this is It'll Do 2, it's a basically a top-down Zelda game where you're a little girl and you're on an island and you run around. And you have lots of fun abilities and you go through dungeons and things and you have to fight bosses, and there's some evil enemies, um, I can use it to shoot this guy um, there's lots of spike traps in it um, I'd say it controls pretty well and it looks quite nice it's kind of like this cartoony thingy going on where you have like kids toys and stuff that is your weapons um, and there's also dynamite I wouldn't call that a kids toy because kids shouldn't play with dynamite um, there's lots of uh, very big dungeons to go through um, you have warp points like Zelda it's basically a Zelda if it was um, su super cell shaded and uh, was very um, fun for kids because Zelda's definitely a dark series that no kids could ever enjoy um, and also uh, I like the variety I think that it gets a little bit difficult and overbearing at some points later in the game because that's why I never actually finished it um, and then it just becomes a bit too confusing so I think it's definitely one that you can check out if you feel like it but I wouldn't say it's like among the best Zelda games on the switch because there's lots of other ones um, and I think that you know things like Owlboy may be better six out of ten Earth Atlantis, this is a pretty straightforward game, you just have a little ship in your um, adventure place underwater and it just shoots beams and the more fish that you shoot, the more beams that you get and you get more powerful as you kill things and it goes along. Start off with just a little tiny little pisser um, and soon enough it becomes a giant wide massive thing that will give you loads of boosts and loads of power ups like this P here which gives me two now. Um, it looks kind of like Gum and Clive which I think is a good thing, Gum and Clive is one of those best looking art styles of 2013 whenever it came out and it looks especially good on the 3DS which is why I kind of miss the 3DS. 3DS on uh, the Switch, but the Switch is good because it's got other reasons for being good. Um, there's not much to this game aside from you go around and you just shoot people, um, and it's kind of fun for a little bit. It gets a bit boring after a while, and it's one of those things that if you like roguelike things where you just keep doing the same thing again and again, and you just like shooting stuff, which I know a lot of old school arcade people like, then it's probably a good game for that. Um, it definitely leaves a lot to be desired in terms of longevity because it's something that if you get bored of, then you kind of get tired of, and sometimes the backgrounds are hard to kind of see because every Everything's kind of going on everywhere. Uh, 4 out of 10. Okay, so Rive, it's a video game where you play this little ship, but you're also like jumping and platforming whilst also doing twin stick shooting. And it's actually really fucking good. It's really one of those games that I don't expect to get into because it's one of those that, you know, I'm not a big fan of like arcade shooties and doing dual twin stick things and chasing high scores. And this is generally not that because most of it is like an adventure where you're going through levels and you're beating things, but also it's very hardcore because it's got um, really difficult challenges where a lot of enemies are running at you and sometimes there's some dialogue bits. And it's quite funny because it lets you actually kill the robot who does the dialogue which I find annoying so that's why I always do that and I kill a robot and it's got some uh, elements like this where you open doors and puzzles um, it's really very fun and has a lot of shooting in it and I think that it just feels really good there's a lot of jumping and moving around it gets a lot of getting used to but it's definitely one of those games that I think should be given a chance of day which not many people have played it um, it's very very unique and, and weird and, and not the type of game that I usually go in for but I was surprised by myself by how much I enjoyed it so it's definitely one that I would recommend a lot of people play it's called Rive it's Ultimate Edition I believe it's probably quite cheap on the Switch shot now so I'd recommend you give it a go 9 out of 10 
So Steamworld Dig, it's made by Image and Form, the guys who make Steamworld Dig 1 and 2. This is Steamworld Dig 2, what am I saying? Um, they make lots of really good games. Uh, this one in particular is very fun and it's the best one that I think they've made so far. I like Steamworld Heist quite a bit, but it wasn't as good as um, Codename Steam, which is of course the GOAT of all time. Um, Steamworld Dig 2 improves a lot of things. It has like a grappling hook you can jump up and has like a hover boost thing, which makes things much, much easier. And I think overall it just feels a lot of um, better than a lot of things that we have seen in the past on Image and Form's uh, resume. I think that definitely it's more overrated for a lot of people. I like it quite a bit, but I definitely, I don't know, something about the digging and digging that constantly diggy diggy is not the thing that I always go in for. It's definitely satisfying to carve your way through a giant mountain, but sometimes it's like, I don't know, if I want to do that, I want to maybe explore somewhere else and not have these mechanics just be so like this. So sometimes I'm just a little bit down on it, but I think the art style is very poppy and looks very nice. Um, Dorothy's a cool character. She's very colorful. It's very bright. It's very kind of like a wind wakery almost with a bloom that's going on and I think that there's a lot of fun times to be had. 7 out of 10. So this is Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Some might say it's slightly unfair to give me only a one minute time limit to review what my, one might say is the greatest game video game ever made by humans, but I think that it's definitely a thing that you can get across in a very few words because it's not really a game that needs words to describe it. It's a game about beauty and visuals and artisticness and look at the giant castle in the background and the leaves and the trees and just breathe it all in as Link just runs around this enormous expanse. Am I going to make any progress in one minute? No, but that's not what it's about. It's about absorbing the atmosphere and taking it all in and becoming a wrestler um, and, and living and, and just breathing and, and smelling. It is a game about the small things and the tiny things and also the big things, the grandeur, the spectacle. It's an amazing combat system and it has an amazing world and it's all full of discovery and joy. And you can take out your sword and just like do a spin like this and you can like play it like the original Legend of Zelda top down if you want to. Like, look at this. Imagine someone does a full playthrough of the game like this. I can imagine them doing so. Like, it seems like a crazy thing, but someone would do that with this game. They've already figured out so many physics-y weird things that you can do like the ability to shoot 11 out of 10 best ever. Super Mario Odyssey is a game that reminds us all why we love video games. It's about the simple expression of Mario's jump. It's so simple and yet you can do so much with it. It's the flexibility, throwing the hat now that you can do and you can jump and leap onto it and things like that. Um, it is amazing looking. It has such smooth frame rate. It has amazing new abilities. You can go and find these weird fish people. What if I don't want to be a Mario anymore? What if I want to just be this weird fish person? Look, I can just do it. And it's one of those things that you don't think about is a thing that would be fun, but yes, it is. It's something that is created creative and genius and weird and that's what EAD Tokyo do the best is that they make these ideas that make literally no sense in the heads of other humans but because they're so wildly creative and inventive they make fun ways to move around and to play with Mario's playground and his tool set it just creates new possibilities and eras and things that you can do Mario Odyssey is a game that is all about finding things and being hidden secrets kind of like Breath of the Wild and they both do similar things in that way but it also is about expressivity and like how do you want to move Mario around how do you feel he moves is it something that you want to just sit there and, and chill and do some practicing on some backflips or you can run around 10 out of 10. Sonic Mania is nostalgia and it is also modern. It is the old and it is the new. It is a combination of the two and makes for an adventure that is wildly more fun and engaging than any other Sonic game that I've played in recent memory. My favourite is Sonic Advance, which I think is a particularly fun game and actually is very underlooked by the wider community of people who play video games. Um, and yet Sonic Mania fuses the oldness and adds such a fresh take. It looks gorgeous, it replicates that art style and that feel of the original Sonic games, but also adds some craziness. Like there are so many one-off mechanics that happen in this game that I really enjoy and think are unique and so perfectly done and thought out. Um, the fact that you can play as all the different characters, the fact that I can be Knuckles, who is my favourite, who I just run around and, you know, do the stupid glidey thing, climb up walls I used to do in Sonic Advance all the time. It demands the audience of the old, but it also says, hey, if you never liked Sonic games, maybe you'll like this one, because look, he goes fast, man. So even Knuckles goes fast, even though he probably shouldn't be as fast as Sonic, but probably they're all the same speed. It's something I've always wondered. It's like, why is Knuckles and Sonic actually the same speed, or Tails is as well? Like, it seems like they shouldn't be. 8 out of 10. Shantae, half genie hero. So this is Shantae and she's a genie and she has a hair whip. Um, this is the most recent one that they made, um, Way Forward, who is the developer. And it's actually the Shantae game that I like the most. I've only played two of them. The other one I played was Pirate's Curse and I thought that one wasn't very good. Um, it was okay. It was just like a bit too much Metroidvania and it wasn't very good Metroidvania in the sense that there's lots of long corridors that I didn't really like. Whereas this one feels like more of an action focused game but also has the Metroidvania elements but also it's a lot easier to find things and get back to them. Also Shantae now has an ability to where she can like turn into different things. There's 
this fun little bat guy. Um, I think actually for this I probably want to be a harpy because then I can just like fly anywhere. Um, so anyway, um, Shantae can transform to animals. That's cool. It makes you solve different puzzles. Um, a lot of the enemies are just kind of goofballs and you can beat them easily. But it's got a Kraken soundtrack, really banging along. Um, looks gorgeous. Has this kind of mix of the um, very cartoony art style with some pseudo 3D elements added into it to make it kind of stand up from the crowd a little bit. Some could say it's a bit incongruous, but I would say that it looks pretty good. And I think that overall it's got kind of the fun elements that you want. You can increase your hair whip and speed and power, which is something that feels good. Uh, 8 out of 10. So Mario Plus Rabbit's Kingdom Battle is a fun strategy video game where you play as a little hoover and um, it's got a lot of strategy to it and the strategy is really interesting and cool because you only got three characters and three characters have to use sync uh, with each other by like um, running into enemies and then hitting them really hard and then doing like big super attacks and then you can like chain things together with Mario and Luigi if they do like their overwatch abilities but it's also got some puzzles where you like break things and like run around this area which a lot of people didn't like but I kind of did enjoy I thought it was a good fun element to add to the game is aside from the strategy which I hope I get to show you but I don't think I will because I can't find any right now and look at me I'm just running around like an idiot so anyway um, there's got also dumb things like some cutscenes where like Rabid Peach is really the best character and she should probably be in Smash Brothers I think but also I just think that it's one of those games that was weird and out of the blue and everyone expected to be really bad but end up being fantastic because it's not a very deep strategy game but it does have the core elements of what makes strategy fun by giving you a lot of different abilities and flexibility despite the fact that you only have three characters really play with at one time they interact in meaningful ways, and it's a very great game, 8 out point five out of 10. Hey, do you remember Castlevania? Because this is pretty much that. It's a Castlevania game that you always wanted again, and they're giving it to you right now in the year of our Lord 2019, even though it came out in 2018. You play as lots of different characters, and you can twitch between them just whenever you want, like this, like I'm going to be an old man now. Um, and he can do some magic spells versus the other characters who can do like other weird stuff. So I can switch over to Miriam, who has the whip, and she's like a classic Castlevania character. I think that's a really cool element, that you can just change them on the fly, and then they also act as different lives for you. So if you die, then you can change a different one and just use that one instead. Um, it feels really good. It has a patented feel of Castlevania, which is just stilted and slow and weird. That I know a lot of people are not a fan of, but I personally think it's very, very satisfying. Looks gorgeous, like really brings out the colours, and each character has their own distinct colour. Mirin being purple and Zangetsu being red, and everything just kind of sticking out. Um, hearts and health, I think, are something that they fixed also, because that's what they used to not do, um, but I think it's now a thing that they should do. Uh, anyway, it's very, very difficult and challenging, but also has a lot of um, fun elements, and it lets you go on easy if you want to, if you find it a bit too tricky. But look at this pixel art! It's great! 9 out of 10! Octopath Traveler is a very long video game where you play lots of pixel people who run around in a big pixel world. And it's very, very nice to look at and the battle system is pretty damn good. It's very satisfying. You have to break people's shields, which is something that is kind of a mix of the blend of the Bravely Default series that this part of this team kind of worked on, although this team is actually a choir and not really the Bravely Default team. Some people kind of confuse that and the fact that they kind of have some silver producers and people on board. The, beside the fact, because it has a really great soundtrack that I listened to for most of the last year, I think is just an excellent thing overall. Um, has a little bit of exploration on the side, but I think it's a little bit muted because it's not really, it's mainly a linear just path you run down and sometimes you'll fight enemies and sometimes you won't and then you can like really get into it because you're like, okay, I've got all these abilities and classes and all the classes kind of mix together really well so you can choose which ones you want to have and which ones you'll focus. You've got different skills for each one and each one will be more focused on um, different characters and they might do more damage depending on how high level they are. Um, they really are a, a lot of layers to this thing and it's all about kind of building up your abilities and I think that's a really fun thing to do. I think honestly it's the best part of the game and I'd give it a 7.5. So there's The Messenger. It's a game all about a delivery boy who can float like a squirrel. Um, it's pretty fun, but if you die, then this evil red guy takes away all your money and li likes to eat it because he's very hungry. Um, it's very, very cool, and it switches between 16-bit and 8-bit. I think overall it's one of those games that I think if it had come out in a different year, it might have been maybe a game of the year, but it has a few different things that it doesn't do as well. The Metroid part when you're running back through it is a little bit not as good as the first part where it's just Ninja Gaiden. Um, and I like Ninja Gaiden as a word to say. It sounds funny and it's very very cool um, but also it's definitely an inspiration on the developers car and they've talked about it a lot um, I would say that it looks very cool and then it does this thing where it's like holy shit it's gone to 8 bit all of a sudden and it's like what the fuck it's like and it just naturally transitions the music and everything and I'm like that's a very cool trick that I think lots of games should try and do um, but the other thing is like you can slice this and then like you get an extra jump that's great um, and it's one of those things that's like a unique mechanic this game does that I haven't seen before um, it just feels really nice to just run around and slash people in the face I slash this thing, I jump, I collect these little doodads, a slice, um, 8 out of 10. 
Paladins. Paladins is a games as a service, which means you'll see this fucking screen every time you try and play it. This is what video games are like these days. When you try and play them, they're like, oh, wait a second, we're conceptually, alternatively, always online. We never stop. It's always about updates, the gigabits. We're dropping patches left, right, and center. Do you want to play my game? Well, guess what? You're going to have to forfeit your soul to my game because I won't let you be any good at any other video game. You have to only like my game and we'll let you buy our loot boxes and we'll let you buy our Battle Pass because guess what that's how we make all our money and that's how we live and that's how we fund the world and you know what paladins is a good game i actually really liked it it would be really fun to play some of it while reviewing it at the same time but apparently they don't care about my video that i'm trying to make right now under a time situation they just want to spend 20 minutes downloading a patch so that i can maybe play the video game after i've already finished uploading this video which is fine but it's not good for me right now because all i want to do is talk about paladins and how it's kind of overwatch but not really and almost is as good but not actually so I'll give it like a 7 because fuck this Mega Man Legacy Collection. Let me tell you one thing. All the games in this collection could be straight utter garbage. If they had Mega Man 2, it would make it the best. Guess what? They have Mega Man 2. Uh, this makes this the perfect Switch game. All you need to do is go on a plane, play some Mega Man 2. What do you mean you don't like Mega Man 2? What's wrong with you? It's the greatest video game ever made on the Nintendo Entertainment System. Most Nintendo Entertainment System games I'm not a big fan of because I think they're old and bad. And Mega Man 2 is very old. But it's not very bad. Uh, as you can see, I'm running and I'm killing things. Um, and that just feels good. Mega Man, he moves like a weird, weird kind of alien thing. He doesn't like move like an actual human boy would. But that's because he's not a real human boy. He's a robot boy. And what do robot boys do? They jump like very strange things and they have to fight giant dogs that breathe flames out their mouth. This is not a regular occurrence. This is not a regular person's job. But this is what he does and this is what he feels is his goal and his lot in life. And I agree with it. I think honestly, shooting lemons out of your fists is the best way to be um, a video game character. And I think that no one sums it up better than Mega Man. He is my favorite. He will always be the best. 99 out of 10. Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is a stunningly gorgeous Japanese role-playing game that has a lot of anime in it. I wish it had a bit less anime in it, but fucking look at this! How do you, like, even begin to describe the glory of the worlds that Monolith Soft creates? They're unlike anything else. They're alien, and yet they feel so natural. They feel like the inside of a giant beast, which this actually is, and it's like, but also there's trees and glowing fauna and just amazingness, and I can just jump from anywhere and yes i'll probably die but like who cares because fucking look at this world it's just outstanding how could you not want to just exist in this place not to mention the soundtrack which is one of the greatest things of all time that human history has ever invented and they really have nailed a lot of things yes it's fucking annoying the menus are bad but the battle system is the best battle system i've probably played in a japanese role-playing game and that's saying something when you know i've played quite a few of those and i would say that i have a good idea of what is good and what isn't so i'd say that if you like anime and you're like okay i can deal with this but also you get great worlds and also i'm cheating because i'm going over the time limit fucking buy it it's like the best 12 to 2 out of 10 into the breach is just very difficult but it's also so satisfying as you have all these units that you have to place in certain places like a strategy game like fire emblem and there are these bugs and you've got to kill the bugs but it's there's so many factors like they know exactly where they're going to attack so you have to make those really fine decisions about what exactly you're going to do on a turn and it takes a lot of thought processes like what should i do here should i go for a giant big laser beam with this guy like i could do that and t take this dude out but then he would still be uh, some of his friends still be alive should i go and kind of drag this guy out of here can i even do that this guy at the moment i don't think can because he's trying to pull so i could pull him into a building and then do some damage or i could go like this and like ram into one of these dudes actually probably better like if i reverse that move and get this guy over here because this guy can like ram into him to kill him then i can take my laser dude who can stand over here and like smash into that but the bad problem about this is that i will probably end up injuring my own building which i don't want to do see there's so many layers here of depth and i give it 8 out of 10 so Skyrim is a game where you can kind of do what you want if you really feel like it. I have a house over here. I can just go sleep in there and read some books if I wanted to. Or I could just go over here and like kill some people and then the guards would attack me and it'd be really bad. I don't want to do that. Or I could just like, wait until the morning, sell some shit in this shop. Or I could just like wander around Whiterun because it's such a nice town. And just like look at how nice this town is. I know it so well. I got up these steps and then on this side there's the place where the companions are and their little like upside down boat house. Or I could go all the way up to the high 
place where the like king guy lives and that's really cool because it's just overlooking areas and that's where I need to go for my alchemy if I want to upgrade that if I want to just like jump a lot I think I can like upgrade my jumping even though I don't think that's a thing in this game probably in a different Elder Scrolls game also have like this woman who's like following me around all the time because I just want her as like a basically an extra equipment bag and it's kind of a bad thing to do but you know what Skyrim just lets you be it's the most close to living in Lord of the Rings that I've felt and sometimes I'll just sit down at a pub while a man is playing like flute and like singing a song it's lovely 9 and 9 out of 10 Splatoon 2 it would be the best game on the switch if I didn't have to do this every fucking time I opened the game I mean did they learn their lesson from the original does anyone think this is a good idea I have to sit while these stupid squid people chat to me constantly about things that I'm gonna find out anyway because if I'm gonna play Splatoon I'm just gonna play online I'm just gonna go there and shoot some people with my ink and it's gonna be very fun and I'm gonna enjoy it and it's gonna be smooth as butter because it's just a gorgeous game but this entire minute may just be taken up by these ladies quids who are very cool people but i don't need to hear them every time i turn the game on really do i not i don't and by the time i'm even gonna what's in what there's a box okay C cool well i haven't been on this game in a while anyway splatoon 2 it's a very good game you've all probably played it i mean how can you avoid it it's splatoon um you shoot people with your ink and they die and go explodey it's very enjoyable and i should play some more of it because i haven't played it in a long, long while um so that's what i'm gonna do um, 9 out of 10? So Rocket League is a game where you could be a pigeon um, on top of a car. It's really fun. You have to put it in the goal. It's kind of like this game called Football, which I think you might know if you don't live in America. Um, so it feels really nice. Um, and like jumping around is cool. It flows so well. They made the decision to make it 60 frames a second instead of making it look really like 4K goodness or whatever, even though the Switch can't do 4K, if you know what I mean. But you know what I mean. Like it's all about scoring goals. I scored a goal. I didn't even plan this. I had one minute to do this review and I've already scored a goal. So already that increases my review score by how many points probably like three i was originally going to give rocket league like a seven five but i have to increase it by three now uh, that probably means i have to give it a 10.5 which is over the scale that's probably not what rocket league deserves but you know what i just scored a goal can i score a second oh, oh my god if i scored a second then it would have really got the 10.5 but as it stands i don't think i'm going to be able to um but hey look the ball's big um which is nice because it helps people who you know of have trouble hitting things if it's big it makes it so that you can really see it out of the sky 10 out of 10 goodbye okay so bitrate runner 2 is kind of like what if mobile games were good and what if they were really difficult as well and what if like they were almost as good as the original but not quite and had just some flaws in them that could needed to be corrected out um but weren't at launch and maybe did get sword later which honestly i don't know if they were because i wasn't paying attention after i played this game um it's a high action high octane very fast very difficult to keep track of because there's lots of things happening spike traps but it's all about the rhythm and keeping the beat and i like rhythm and beats and I like things where you have to keep in time but also have quick reactions and that's what this game is all about it's all about like can I press the button fast enough can I press it quick enough do I know what's coming if I do know what's coming do I have ample time to react to it or not uh, and that's really the big question here is whether you want to go for a game that's all about just making the rhythm come and the beat and also not being frustrated if you die constantly because it is a very difficult game and I'm actually really surprised I haven't played this in fucking forever and I'm doing okay at it but maybe I just have a natural talent gift of God as they say some people like to say that's um, that 6.7 out of 10 Okay, so Fortnite. I know most of you won't have heard of this game. It's very, very obscure. It's actually the sequel to Hide and Seek Simulator 2014, um, and it's pretty cool. Idea is that you basically just have to find a place that you can hide, um, and the idea is that you have to hide there for a fortnight. That's why it's called Fortnite. Um, and if you manage to do that, then you win um, something. I don't know what it is, but apparently, like, you maybe uh, get a free trip to Disneyland or something. I've heard some cool stuff like that. So I'm just gonna drop in here, and I think we're just gonna hide in this little hut here um, and so I'm just gonna be here for like two weeks um, so that's pretty much the game it's pretty fun it's like one of those games that's not actually oh no someone else is in here oh, they took my hiding spot no no go away oh well I got 95 so that's usually where I come in Fortnite it's pretty good um, so uh, I would say get it because it's free and you don't need to pay for it so it's like do I need to review a game that's free it's kind of pointless question um you know it's got snowboarding in it now so yeah 14 out of 10 because fortnite okay so dead cells all about killing 
enemies and dodge it out of the way. Um, it's a very fun game. Uh, and I think it like has lots of elements that I think could be used by other games, like a very fluid, fluid combat system, um, the ability to get behind enemies and like do your attacks after like doing a roll, like doing a last kind of ditch thing. Um, it moves very fluently, but it's also about how many different types of weapons you have and what weapons work well. Um, I generally like the sword. For some reason, I just got a giant ass hammer this time, which is not my favorite, and I like I kind of deal with it but um, at first the jumping feels a bit like whack and off and it's kind of difficult to get your head around but very soon you get used to heaviness and the heaviness feels good because it's all about like rolling and dodging picking up items and, and making sure that you have everything that you need in your arsenal bows are great swords are great I think that it's obviously one of those things that you're going to be playing a lot of it a lot because um, it's very very challenging but you know one day you'll get to the end of it maybe I mean that's kind of what I'm hoping because I don't really have much hope that I'm ever going to get too far in it seven out of 10.6 so Celeste you know I'm not even gonna be snarky about this one because Celeste is just straight up one of the best games I've ever played um, it's just such a joy um, it makes every single element uh, immaculate it's gorgeous it has an affecting story it is challenging in a way that is so brutal and unforgiving and yet gives you so much satisfaction when you're able to overcome it um, it's one of those games that you need to play a lot and familiarize yourself with because it's all about repetitive actions but through those repetitive actions your abilities growing and your confidence growing and that's what Madeline does throughout this game she grows her confidence she grows her abilities and she's able to um, come to terms with all the things that she has to deal with not to mention the fact that like it has some genius mechanics the level design is just fucking impeccable like this stuff is so much fun to do um, it definitely takes some time to get used to but it's one of those things that once I had the core idea I was like I never want to stop doing this and they're making more of it this year they're going to continue to put out more DLC for it which I think is just a phenomenal thing that they need to keep doing um, 99 out of 10 Celeste is the best so Grease Gree however you want to say it, it's one of those it's one of those gorgeous just pieces of art that you can't help but admire its style and its sheer just aesthetic like its pure ability to not even look like a video game but is just a literal moving painting of just style and, and substance it's so much more of a video game than i even thought it was going to be it's one of those games that i picked up and i was like yeah it'll probably be enjoyable and, and probably be kind of a walking simulator but there's a lot more video game elements to it than i ever even expected and it just has moments of pure, gorgeous beauty to it that are almost unfathomable. Um, it really is one of those unique experiences that I recommend people try because um, it just has so much life and colour to it. Um, and it really is about bringing colour back, which is something that I can admire. It's a world that I really love existing in. And I think it's, um, you know, a very unique thing that people should give a go and, and try out because I think it's beautiful. 9 out of 10. So Valkyria Chronicles 4, it's a game where most of the time you'll be spending doing this, uh, which is go menu system load game because it's hard like it's very difficult it's a game where you control all these units of anime characters and you have tanks and you can shoot these tanks and you can aim them sometimes they hit sometimes they don't it's like will I hit this guy in this situation I can go for it and try and get him but will it actually no like see i was pointed at him and it said i could ki kill him but it didn't so there are elements like that that just like happen and you have to deal with it the fact that it's it's not going to potentially work for you every time um i love using snipers in this game they're a lot of fun if i can find my sniper up here she is she's the best kai she's very very useful um so we're gonna try and snipe some people from out here can i get this guy four shots to kill but if i get a headshot i kill him in one will i be able to do it oh we have no potential are we gonna get our sniper accuracy <gasps> Look at that. And he's dead. So it's cool. Like, it's action plus strategy all in one. And it's a very neat idea and concept. And it's a lot of anime, but it's also a lot of strategy. 80.2 out of 10. So Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is the ultimate Smash Bros. experience. Everyone loves saying Bros. Um, do I want to unlock the cart from Mario Kart? Probably. Who's that going to be? I'm going to play as Lucina with the spirit of Soma Cruz from a Castlevania handheld game that came out in like the early 2000s versus Mario in a wedding suit from Super Mario Odyssey. Three of them acting as a really fast 
Kart from Mario Kart DS that came out, what, 2005? This game is just basically references the game. It's also an incredibly competent and very, very fun fighting game. And I think that it's probably the most fun that I'm going to have on my Switch for the rest of history. Um, it, despite the fact that I'm just getting wrecked by the stupid little Marios. Um, it's very, very enjoyable. And I think that, you know what, you should play this video game if you own a Switch. Because it's probably the one I'd recommend that anyone buys. Um, just because it's Smash Brothers. And, like, do you like anything, Nintendo? Then you'll probably like something in Smash Brothers, right? It's only got a reason that that would be the, the case. So I think that this is probably the best game. 100 out of 10. That's every game on the Switch reviewed. Okay, so that was um, the video. What did we learn here? Well, we learned that it takes a long time um, to do a video, which I thought was going to be fine because it's like, I'll just do a minute of each of these games. Oh, wait, I actually own a lot of games on Switch. I didn't realize that was... A bad idea um anyway i hope you enjoyed this whatever the hell it was and maybe i'll make another video when i have another idea of something to make thanks for watching i'll see you all next time bye